This is uh, MovieZ 101, uh, Tuesday, April 2nd, 2020. So far, June, June is the only one that's here. Maybe she's gonna get a private. We're gonna start um, and see what happens. So June, June is set up in a static back. You can't see all of her, but you can see a lot of her. Her legs are up on a chair. Her hips are at a 90 degree angle. Or close to it and her legs are her knees are also at a 90 degree angle and she's just lying back if she needs to and I don't can't see whether she needs to but she may want to put a stack of washcloths under her head to create a neutral cervical spine or a pillow The idea is to feel like you're not tilting your cervical spine too far backward or too far forward. Neutral, a neutral spine, a neutral cervical spine. And just start to, uh, we're gonna do some breath work. Remember, this is not the opening breath work in a home practice or in a practice in your class here. Move Easy 101 is not to be rushed through. So we're gonna be here for about four minutes. Just watching your breath. Breathing in and breathing out. And paying attention to that, to your inhale and your exhale. What does this feel like in your body? And June's already in the, the static back position, supine static back position. And this is a great place to do opening breath work.
Take a couple more breaths and set an intention for your practice today. And before you come up to seated, go ahead and let's do a Vegas um, reset, Vegas nerve reset. So just bring your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers, have your interlaced fingers pressing into the base of your skull at the occipital ridge. It's not on the cervical spine, it's, it's a, a, on the edge of the top of the cervical spine. Pressing your hands into your skull and your skull into your hands. Your chin will drop slightly, not because you dropped it, but because there was a lift that happened at the back of the skull. So feel the lift at the back of the skull that creates a drop at the front of the, at the chin and the nose, actually. And then... I, you can do that without a vagus nerve reset, and it's a great movement for shoulders and upper back. The resistance, or actually an isometric, where there's no movement exactly, but the resistance going, the two forces moving in opposite direction actually create some strength and, and some st stability here, which is what the neck, the, the cervical spine needs. But from there, you can stay in that, that shape and shift your eyes to the right. Eyeballs, nothing else shifts, just the eyeballs. And you're waiting for a yawn, a, an involuntary yawn, sigh, swallow, or gulp. And we can't see, we, we can't see all of you. You might want to try a little more tilting later as you're not right now, but, um, and when I say we, I'm talking about the audience that's gonna watch this. Okay. We'll see. Okay. Um, um, anyway, I want you to come back to center and then sh shift your eyeballs to the left and wait again for a Vegas reset, which will be signaled by a yawn, a swallow, a gulp, or a sigh. And did you get, or are you getting a yawn, swallow, sigh, or gulp? I swallow, I had a swallow. Okay, come on back and do that, that's great. Come on back and do that right, left again. So take your time, I'm just gonna wait for you. Eyeballs shift to the right first. Hey, I heard that. Was that yeah? And then go to the other side. So Vegas nerve reset is something that you can do anytime, anywhere. You don't actually have to be supine. You don't actually have your have to have your hands behind your head. Just be still, sit tall, so that you can actually you know, you're breathing fully and uh, then shift your eyes. And you can have your eyes open and closed. This, the vagus nerve reset and static back, supine static back are described in handouts that are available on the uh, Intelligent Movement library page. Just go and go to that website, my website, and then click on the library um, link.
and, and then search for it. If you wanted a, a, a something to print or to view. Now go ahead and um, come up to seated and be and see if you can tilt your phone a little bit more. Um, Oh, what happened? Oh, I got dizzy. Hmm? What? I got dizzy. Oh, you got dizzy? Yeah. I got, I got dizzy. Slow down. Slow your, you're getting up off the floor and a little bit, and that'll keep, hopefully keep you from getting up. That's better. Is that better? Go ahead and sit on your pad. You can sit with your knees crossed, your ankles crossed. Is that comfortable for you? Not bad. It, would you rather sit on both knees? You know, in a kind of kneeling position? That's another option. Kneeling? Yeah, like that. Now, now drop your butt back to your heels. Is that comfortable? No. No, that hurts my right knee. Okay, don't don't do that. Or you could try that with a pillow between your, um, uh, you know, your upper legs and your bottom. Is that is that is that that no? Okay, so go ahead and go back to the other way of sitting, cross-legged. I just want to be sure that if you're cross-legged and you can face face the camera. Okay. Just turn your body around and face the camera. Mm -hmm. You can sit on, you could put a, um, a pillow or a brick or something underneath you that would help you with your, your uh, hips. Because your knees are not going to drop to the floor in this position. Actually, if you, if you had either a yoga brick or a, a couple more blankets to put underneath you, you would be more comfortable. I'll get my yoga brick. Okay. This better. Right. And one or maybe even two. Or two, one, two side by side. Are they the same height? Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. Okay. All right. And this is good. There. We're going to do a, what, what would you, well, I should ask you. It's just you. So let me ask you. <laughs> what would you like to work on today? Oh, um. Shoulders. Shoulders. Okay. And. What? Maybe car. 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 Okay. Um, here's what I'd like you to do first. You put your arm up here and elbow up and drop your arm behind your back. And then hold on to the elbow and create some resistance. Oh, I think I'll maybe make us at least um, the same, <laughs> you know, equal windows. So that you're holding on here, you're sitting up tall, you're creating resistance between the hand and the elbow. So press the elbow back and the hand presses forward. Then you're going to take your elbow and take it across your body. So you're going to fold forward and to the, to the left all the way down as far as you can go. Nice stretch for some, for the shoulders. So what? Woo. Yes. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to pin my video. Oops. Whoops. I stopped the video instead of pinning it. I'm going to put me at pin me and see if I can. Of course, now I'm too high. Let me see. This is a table that goes down. 
go down if, let's see if I can take it all the way down and see if you can see that, and you may not be able to do as much of this as I can, so just know that, but see how I'm, I'm scooting back to get more of me here. You're, you're up here, you press here, this is called resistance stretching, Kihara resistance stretching. You're gonna fold fo forward and to the opposite knee and come all the way down, as far down as you can go, while you're resisting, so that the elbow is resisting the downward movement, but the hand is winning and pressing it down. Does that make sense? And can you hear me? Yes and yes. You should feel a really nice stretch all along the, the, the side body and all the way up into the shoulders, lats. So, and then you can do the same thing coming up. The hand resists the upward movement of the elbow, but the elbow wins this time. So each time there's a dance between the elbow, the, 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 uh, the direction the elbow is pressing and the direction that the hand is pressing. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. I just felt like I was gonna fall off these bricks, but I didn't. Um, okay. <laughs> maybe, yeah, not, maybe not to go down as far as that. Or maybe, you know, you'll experiment because maybe what's gonna, you're gonna find is when you sit in a cross-legged position, that you wanna sit on two or three blank, yeah, two or three blank. That would be better probably. Cushion you, you have a little more surface to work with because the bricks are, you know, are a little wobbly. There's two of them and they're, they're you know, they're a little wobbly. But they something to get you up, up right. so that you're, hips so that your knees are closer to the floor basically right and if you we stayed here for very long you might want to put I and mean, this is why you need a whole bunch of towels or blankets for this practice is that you might want to tuck a blanket underneath your knees so they're opening but they're not um over stretching does that okay. make sense? right let's try to try the other side the other, yeah. other opposite el elbow goes up, hold on to it with, let's see here, hold on to just to the tip of the elbow, mm -hmm. and you're going to press down across to the opposite knee, so this, your elbow kind of, you can lift it up, feel a lift here first, lift it out of the socket, and then over, and your hand is winning, but the elbow is resisting this downward movement. And then as you come up, the elbow wins, the hand still resists, it's called resistance training or Kihara resistance. And what we're doing here is creating both strength and mobility in the very same movement, which makes it a lovely, very efficient practice. Thanks. How did that feel? That was good. Let's do it again. I'm gonna um, put us both on the screen so I can look a little more at you. And you don't, you know, you you probably you, you know this a little bit by now. You're taking the bricks away, huh? I'm taking the, this pad away and then I'm getting back on the bricks. Oh, okay. I might be I might be a little more stable. Oh, that was what was creating the instability was that your bricks were on a pad. Well, the, the um, pad. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So what you're saying, okay, so here we go. Right. This, step. this I think would be much better. Okay. And remember, you know, you might want to, next time when you come to class, bring, have a pile of towels or blankets because you can start yes. experimenting with this. I will. Same thing again. So the, this arm, come, one arm comes up. My, it's my right arm, but you can choose one. <laughs> choose one arm, any arm. One arm. Okay, I'll do my right arm as well. Yep. And oh, but, your, your hand, uh, hand comes down your back. Yes. Hold on. Remember, you're pressing the, the elbow across the body to the opposite leg 
pressing it with the hand, the hand is pressing down, the elbow is resisting, and you, and you can start actually by pulling, lift, feeling a lift first of the uh, arm bone out of the socket. So lift, now press. And um, as I come down, which you may not hear me as well when I get down here, um, it's very slow. And while the elbow, while the hand is winning the dance, um, the elbow is resisting the downward movement of the arm. Yeah, it's, it's across the body. So you just know that you're, you're working across the body in front of you toward the opposite knee. Come down as far as you can. It may not be as far as I can. Don't worry. And then now come back up. This time the elbow wins, but the hand is still resisting that movement. Does that make sense? Oh, wow. Ooh. Wow. That is called, it is called, um, oh, la it's a lat opener. It's a, it's, so it stretches all the way along here, which actually affects, comes, the lats come all the way up from way down here, way down to the, at the lumbar spine. They come all the way up the side body and they're often underused. So, and, and creates a lot of tension. And, so you're going to do the opposite side, other arm. Up. That would be the left one, up. Lift, mm -hmm. and down. Elbow. Now, remember, your, your elbow is going across the front of the body towards the opposite knee as far as it can go. The hand is pushing the elbow down while the elbow is resisting the downward movement by pressing up but the hand is winning. You should feel a really nice stretch along the side body. And always breathing. Don't, don't hold your breath here. Mm -hmm. You get down as far as you can come. Come up, come up slower than the downward movement. Slow, slowly coming up. The uh, elbow is winning, but the hand is resisting. The resistance is what creates both strength and mobility uh, for you. Ooh. I think that's, lie down on your back. <laughs> I think that's enough. Enough of that for a while. Lie down on your back. That was good. Yeah, yeah, it is good. I'll call it a resistance lat, seated resistance lat stretch. Or something like that. I don't think I've put that in the library yet. You're lying down and now I want you, to, we're gonna do some more resistance, but I, these are a couple that you can do on your back, supine. Um, you're going to, let's see here. I'm having, to I'm having to convert it a little bit um, because it's supine, but it just occurred to me the other day, uh, even though it's not taught this way, that we could, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hmm, pin my video and I'm going to lie down and show it to you. Um, and see how, how this works. This is kind of an experiment. So you're, you're lying on your back, I'm lying on my back. The arm goes down here to the opposite knee. Your hand goes across, the other hand goes on top on the wrist. This is the resistance, this is the resistance point right here. So I'm going to push up. So starting here at my with my arms down in front of me, I'm going to push up. Don't use it. Don't use anything else. Just your arms. Push up. <coughs> up. So the the wrist is the bottom arm is winning. The top arm is resisting. 
You should feel core work with that resistance. The arm comes up by the ear or as far as it can come. And then you come back down. So this is the strength side of the movement. The hand, is that true? No, yes. No. Yes, that's the stretch. This is the strength. Strength, um, the top hand is winning and the bottom hand is resisting as you come back down. It's slower than the, uh, than the upward movement. Slower, slower, slower. Come back down, come back here. And there you have it. That's the movement. It's called, um, it's called uh, Saturday Night Fever. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. So, so let's see here. So there you are. You're going to try it now. I, I want you to, did you, so remember you're going across your body to the other side, right? So that your so your right arm is coming up by your ear, but with resistance between the two arms, right? And then coming back, and you might want to pull your arm out the, out of the socket a little bit. You know, give it a lift out of the joint, and then then come down. Does that make sense? Then come back down. And remember, so it's not, the top hand is pushing on the wrist, not the back of the hand. So the, the, it's like this. The, the, well, let's see, it's like the top hand is pushing on the wrist. Oh, okay. yeah, not the back of the hand. So it's like that, pushing down okay. on the wrist. The, the bottom arm is moving downward toward the opposite side of the body. You should feel a lot of work in the upper traps. Yes. Yeah. There, that's the movement. Now make it slow, deliberate, and resisted. <laughs> As you, whichever direction you're coming, and breathing. Slow, resistant, breath. Awareness. You can bring it all the way up by your ear if, if you can, if it's comfortable. Now, when you come down, actually, I think I spoke, misspoke. I think the downward movement is the stretch. And the upward movement is, so let's start, let's start high with your arm above your head and then come down. This time, the, the hand is, bottom arm is resisting the downward mo pressure from the top arm, but the top arm is winning, right? Feel a big stretch, and then you come on back. All the way up. This time, the, top, the bottom arm is winning. This is the strength building movement. You're working on your um, your upper traps and your sh the rest of your shoulders. Can you feel it? Oh, yes. Okay, do one more on this side and we'll switch to the other side. Relax your hand, uh, the hand on the bottom arm. You don't have to, you're, you're, you're actually flexing it. I don't want you to do that. Just relax it. It's just there. It's doing nothing. Yeah. Now switch to the other side. So this time the left arm is right up by the ear. The left arm is right up by the ear with the right arm on the back of the wrist, of the left wrist. 
you're going to, the, the right arm is going to push down the resisting left arm, push it down across the body. There's many good things about this pose, and one of them is that you're doing some cross body, cross pattern, uh, cross body patterning. Okay. So, come on back. Nice. Across the body, across the body. Right. Now come on up again, do it a couple more times. So this, the left arm is coming back by the ear, the same side ear, obviously, sort of obvious. And one more. Remember you're creating resistance. The top hand is winning, but the bottom arm is resisting. This is the, nice. And then come on back. Very nice. Just um, stay here, drop your arms um, beside your hips and rest for a minute and then We'll rest for a minute. That works. Yep. And they might have been going to do what's called um, wheel rotation which is also, I'm going to, I guess I will, no, I'm going to put me on, pin me on. Um, there, there. You're going to press, interlace your fingers, Press your palms together, but create a little hollow between your palms and your fingers, your clasp fingers. Put them over your head. Your elbows can start, let's see, start wide so you have space between them. And then you're going to press in. This is isometric, really. You're going to imagine that you're pressing a balloon and deflating it. So press the elbows in. Keep the hands the way I described them. Press the elbows in towards each other as far as you can go. And then imagining that you're def inflating a balloon, but keep some resistance both directions, right? You're going to slowly resisting, allow, resisting and allowing the elbows to, to part, and then you do it again. So this time you're imagining that you're, and you're deflating a balloon. The elbows come slowly towards each other while they are resisting that movement. And then you open the elbows, inflating the balloon, but you're resisting the entire movement. So this is more resistance. So I can't see your hands, but I don't think they're where they're supposed to be. So can you move your screen a little bit so I can see your hands? They should be over your face, but I couldn't tell whether they were. Not there, not over your head, over your face. Yes, uh, the elbows are just up above your face. Like this. Can you see me? Yes. There, yeah, that's where they should be. Okay. I think you had them farther back, but I couldn't tell for sure. What was that? I said, I think you had them farther back. I did. But I couldn't tell. For okay, good. That I makes did. So put them where I just told you. 
Okay. And now, your elbow should be at least at your chin, no lower than your chin. You can actually experiment with this, putting it farther, uh, elbows farther up or down, but no, no, not, not any lower than the chin. So your hands are in the position I described. Your palms, so the bottom of your palms and the, and the fingers are pressing, pet pressing together. So your hands have that, there's that kind of resistance up there. And then from there, you're opening and closing like a bellow, really, bellows opening and closing, inflating and deflating the balloon with resistance. So keep, keep the bottom of the palms together. Keep the palms together. Yes, now just open and close the elbows. So can you bring, yeah, and how, your, can you close your elbows, bring your elbows toward, towards each other? So I don't see the elbows moving. Can you hear me? Hello? June, can you hear me? I think I lost you. I think this is a frozen screen. Hmm. Oops, there. Okay. Go ahead and keep, let me watch, uh, see if I can see. So the elbows, so it's not the hands that are moving. The hands are in one position. They're in one position. It's the elbow. Move the elbows towards each other to deflate the balloon. Keep the elbows at a 90 degree angle. So, and then open and close using resistance. So, resisting the opening when you're closing the elbows to each other you're resisting the movement with your mind it's really isometric and opening and closing and see if you can bring your elbows a little farther away from your knees away from your knees toward the door now open and close Oh, close and then can you feel the work in the um, rotator cuff muscles the, yes okay all righty good <laughs> good we have you we have an, you know, an interesting angle on the screen for, for our future viewers <laughs> you're sort of <laughs> upside down basically Pardon? You're upside down. And you're sideways. <laughs> Am I? Oh, okay, no. Oh, you're sideways. I don't, I don't know, know how that works. works. I don't know That's how that cool. happens. Let me see if I can get it back. There. Mm -hmm. Now, how did this feel? How did that feel? Oh, that was a workout. Right. Okay, good. Let's see what else. That's called can opener. Can opener, right. <laughs> it's one of the things it's called. Um, now, one more. You're gonna lie on your, oh, you're up. So maybe I, I'm not gonna have you lie on your back. You're gonna do this seated. Well, I can lie down. I just got up so I could switch the phone around. Okay, but this can be done either seated or, or standing. Supine or standing. So you're seated. I'm going to show you this one in my video for a minute. All you're going to do is start here with your hand down here. The opposite hand is on the wrist. That's where the resistance is. We're doing resistance movements for the shoulder today. At least so far, that's what we've been doing. Um, you're going to lift your arm up, elbow up to level, to parallel to the floor. Well, no, you know that the top hand is, is resisting the upward movement, right? Up, and then stretch, stretching. So up for strength, 
resisting with the upper hand. And now the upper hand wins, the bottom hand resists as you come down. So that's easy enough, right? You could do this also um, supine. Standing? Yeah. Don't take it too high, just, just parallel, parallel to the body. Yep. Is this hand on my hand or my wrist? On your wrist. It's on the okay. back of your wrist. You're gonna look so wait a minute. So you are so you're 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 on the right hand first. The right hand arm is at your waist, the elbow bent at your waist. Then the left arm and it and it's pointing straight out. So you have it over across your body. I'd like you to see it, have it straight out. Does that make sense? Yes. Um but you, but you still have it have it over your body. The movement that happens is from here to here, up to the side. Do you see that? You're working out here in front of yourself. I want you to work to the side. This is a delt stretcher. You're working right along here. Oh yeah, I feel the difference. It's totally different movement. So I don't know why, but you keep moving your arm across your body. I want you to take it out to the side, out to, so you, the top wrist is putting, is pressing, the top hand is pressing onto the bottom wrist, but you're gonna move it out to the side and up. Maybe I have the wrong, can, can you be, be square, put yourself square with the, the phone, the, your screen, so I can make sure what you're doing, because I think maybe part of the problem is that the angle. Okay, now find, assume the position. <laughs> right? That's not the position. So the position is out here. Put your don't don't t take your left hand away. Put your right hand like this, just almost like you were about maybe to shake someone's hand or something. Right? Right out in front of you. So you you're still having a little inward. If I'm if you are if you are directly in front of my my the screen, I want it straight out, right? Like that. So if you extend your arm, extend your arm, extend, you straighten your arm. Yeah, okay, and, and bend it, straighten it. That's pretty good. Okay, bend it, put your hand, other hand on top of the wrist. Now, don't move your hand in just because this is, putting pressure on it. Keep, keep the hand out and then it's opening out to the side up. Oh, isn't that interesting? No, that's not it. That's no. not, mm -mm. That's, um, how do I explain this to you? Um, let's do it without the resistance. Okay, you, you, so here you are and you got that, your, your arm is straight out. Now, all I want you to do is lift your elbow out to the side. Now, keep your elbow bent. Keep your, keep your elbow, so keep your um, bent elbow. Lift the elbow out to the side. That's better. No, keep the elbow bent though. You're straightening it. What? I think so. I think so. Lift, maybe, I, maybe I'm seeing it wrong. I mean, I, I, this is one of the side Okay, this is one of the, it, the issues about online, you know. Okay, go ahead and lift up. Just take it. It feels like you're going out like this. It looks like to me you're going out like this. But if you tell me you're not, I believe you. Just keep it at a 90 degree angle and lift it up. Straight up. Okay. Down and up. Down and up. Don't go up here. Don't go up here. Keep keep it at keep it in this shape. Keep it in this shape. The only thing really that's moving is the uh, head of the arm bone, right? Because this stays the same. The bent elbow stays the same. The head of the arm bone is lifting up in the socket. Okay, that's enough. Let's do that on the other side because you're gonna that side's gonna be real <laughs> from all the work. So try it on the other sides first. Just 
just um, press out, press out in front of you, back, out, straighten, bend, straighten, bend, straighten, bend. Now keep the bend. There's nothing moving down here. The only thing that's moving is up here at the elbow. And then it comes back down. And then up. And up. Now, shake it all out. Because, <laughs> and we're going to try this again. I would shake your hands too, because your wrist, this is a wrist workout too. You may know. And, uh, well, there's lots of things happening here. So sit up tall. Start on the, on the right side. Now create some resistance. We've been practicing this movement. Now create some resistance for the movement. Put your hand here. Up it goes, straight out to the side. Yes. There's a resistance that happens on the hand, with the top hand. Now you're coming down. The, the top hand is winning. The bottom hand, hand and arm is resisting. Now you're coming up. The bottom hand is winning, but the top hand is resisting. So this is, should feel like working in the delts. Do a couple more of those. Um, up, 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 all the way to parallel and then down with resistance. Nice. And switch sides. Yeah, switch, switch to the other side. Are you having fun yet? Yep. <laughs> no shoulders. Okay, now we're gonna add resistance to this side. So this arm stays at this bent elbow, 90 degree bent elbow position. We're gonna put your opposite hand on top of the wrist, outside of the wrist, and then resisting the movement, upward movement of the bottom arm, you're, the bottom arm is gonna win though. So the bottom arm is gonna win, you go out, 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 and then back down. And let's do this three or four more times, slowly. And the, the coming down movement is the stretch and the coming up is the strengthen. And I want you to make the strength movement slower than the stretch movement. And when you come up, you might feel something even on this side as well. At least that's what I do. And stop. And grab your brick. I'm going to go get a brick. Stay seated, grab your brick. Grab your brick, um, any brick, one brick, and I'm going to pull this off. We're going to do some neck work with the brick. Dana, hi. Hi. We're just closing the class because it started at 11. Oh, I thought I emailed you and asked you if it was still at 12. 
And I sent back and said, it's at 11 this week. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to do I'm All set up for nothing. Okay. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Easy. I'll talk to you soon. Next week, it's at the same time. Do you want to do this, this thing we're doing with the brick? Neck and shoulders. I don't understand. We, we have one last move. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. What position am I in? You're seated uh, on the floor or in a chair. Okay. So this is um, isometric. You're going to, first you're going to put your brick, this should be, you're going to put your brick behind your head at the occipital ridge and press in and hold. So sit tall, everybody, both of you. So yeah, this is the last class and the last week where Mexico is not on U.S. time zone. So this class started at 11, but next week it'll start at 12 in, in Mexico. Press, 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 press in. Feel your chin drop. Next time when you don't show up, Dana, I'm going to maybe call you and <laughs> maybe, maybe. This, is, this is a sign. I could, have, I could have saved us a lot of grief by calling you. But anyway, so here you are just pressing the back of the head, but you're not moving, it's just pressing. And just breathing. And then you're gonna put it on the front of your head, do the same thing. So the front of the head, you're pressing your forehead into the brick. And your brick into the forehead, you're not moving anything. Sit it, seated tall. And just stay here for three, six, nine breaths. You should feel a lot of work in the upper back and shoulders, even though we're doing head, head work. And now go to the side. So Again, you're pressing the side of your head into the brick and the brick into the side of your head. And just staying and waiting and pressing and seated tall. And breathing. Maybe three, six, nine breaths. You can close your eyes or open your eyes. You would feel some work in your posture because you're holding good posture and in your shoulders, uh, just because all this, the head work actually works in the shoulders. Other side. Press in, the brick presses towards the head, the head presses toward the brick. You stay here and breathe. Seated, good posture. Three, six, nine breaths. Last one is a side bend. It's not, we're not gonna, not gonna use the brick. You're gonna drop your right ear to your right shoulder put your hand, right hand on the other side, right near the ear if you can reach it. You're gonna press down, uh, press your head down while you're resisting the movement. So the hand presses the head down towards, towards the right shoulder, but the, your head actually presses up into your hand. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're not going anywhere really. Um, and you should feel a really great stretch actually along the outside of the left side. If you didn't press, put your hand there, this, you would feel a, a different stretch. So this is, this is a resistance or an isometric resistance stretch. I love this stretch. 
I think it's actually a much more effective guide bend for the neck than just dropping your head like that. Come on back slowly to center. Drop your left ear to your left shoulder. Press your, put, put your uh, hand, left hand on the right ear or near it, depending on how, how much your reach is. You're pressing the head into the hand and the hand into the head. And just stay here and take some breaths. Three, six, nine breaths. Not, no movement, but lots of activity. You should feel a really nice stretch. Uh, come back slowly to center. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder and then take your chin a little bit forward towards your armpit. So it's a slightly different place that you're working on the, on the outside here, the outside of the cervical. And then you can do the same thing. You can put your head in here. But remember, this is, you should feel a difference between what you just did and what you're doing now. It's a little to the back of, of the first stretch. Put your hand there on the uh, left ear, in my case, right hand, left ear and you're pressing, the hand is pressing down and the head is pressing up. Just stay here and breathe. Three, six, nine breaths. The delicious stretch for the neck. So we did a whole hour. You might want to watch this, Dana, although we had screen have screen issues, but <laughs> we did a whole hour of resistance stretching for the shoulders and then the head and the neck. Come on back, release your slowly release, come up back, back to seated. Left ear to left shoulder, and then drop your chin. And a little bit forward to, towards your armpit, left armpit. Now put the, uh, the left hand on the right ear. From this perspective, this new perspective, press your head into the hand and the hand presses into the head. Take some breaths, three, six, nine breaths. Take your time. None of this work is hurried. It's all slow-mo and awareness in breath. So slowly moving or not moving in this case. Taking a shape, breathing, becoming aware of where you're creating the benefit really or the movement or the non-movement or the stretch there's a stretch going on here anyway even with the non-movement come on back slowly come up and we're going to lie down you're going to lie down on the on the um mat and we're going to do the um i'm going to find my uh 61 point guided meditation. So with your knees, with your knees up on a chair, static, supine, static back. Remember that I have all of these movements that I mentioned. Well, I might have to do a few more. Some of them I did today, I didn't, don't have, but they're in handouts in my IMF library on my website. So um, it's easy for you if you forget a step. It's easy for you to go there if, 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 if you're comfortable going to a, a website. 
um, and find this and read it and follow the steps. We're going to do the 61 point guided meditation to close the class. Make sure you're comfortable and warm. I'm going to ask you systematically to move your attention through some points that I mentioned. Doing that without moving out of your body. Bring your awareness to your breath. Watching your inhale as it rises and it falls. Watching your ab abdomen as it rises and falls. Now bring your attention to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right big thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, right shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, left elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, right knee, right ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, left knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes the 61 point guided meditation. Just stay here and notice your body and how it feels. You may want to thank your body for working with you today. Whenever you're ready, you'll want to push your chair away and extend your legs and start to wiggle your body, right? Maybe stretch your arms overhead. You know how to do this. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Create some space, but by bringing your arms overhead, you create some space between your rib cage and your pelvis. And then hug one knee to your chest and then the other. Rock your knees from side to side. And then drop to one side into a fetal position. Stay there. Don't get up right away. Take some breaths. Orient yourself. So drop to the, your knees to one side or the other, Dana. Yeah. All the way to the floor. Yeah. Stay here until you feel like you're ready. So ask yourself, when, when is it time to get up? Bring your top hand 
on the floor and press yourself up to seated. That's the safest way to get up from the floor. This is the safest way. Sit in a comfortable seated position in the floor, on the floor or in a chair. Bring your hands to your heart. Press your fingers together to, to stimulate the, the fingertip, the, the nerves on the inside of the palms. Lift the back of your occipital ridge, the skull, and drop your chin because you did that. We're going to close the class by saying to each other, Namaste. 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 Thank you, everybody. I'm sorry you we got confused about the time, Dana. And um, I will see you guys. When when is the tape ready tomorrow? Uh, it'll be ready. It has to download, and then I have to upload it. I have it has to download itself, and then I have to upload it. Give me a couple hours. Okay, great. Then I'll just do it. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Stop the. Recording.